Hi, welcome to Perspectives on Faith. I'm your host, Metin Teke. This week, we're coming from Harford Seminary in Connecticut. We have with us today Dr. Ingrid Madsen. She's a professor of Islamic studies at Hartford University, and she's also the president of the Islamic Society of North America. Dr. Madsen, thank you for coming on our show. Uh, you're welcome. Would you describe the gender stratification of the society in which Prophet Muhammad grew up in? Um, w what you have to understand about pre-Islamic Arabian society, first of all, is that it was a society in which there was no rule of law. Um, there was no political structure that was governing the Arabian Peninsula. The uh, only ruling powers were tribes that were in mutual uh, rivalry. These tribes became or operated in, in a way similar to a gang structure. What that means is that the only way to have power, the only way to promote your interests is by using brute force. Uh, the tribes are, are highly territorial and are in constant conflict with each other. Um, a society like this values strength, force, and is highly militarized. What that means is that uh, for women, their position um, is, is secondary to that of men who, who through their strength and through their uh, violence, exercise their will. So the basic structure of the society is one in which women, um, as mostly non-combatants, um, are in a secondary position to men. So why would women respond positively to the message of Muhammad? The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, um, uh, both through his attitude and as the messenger of God with the Qur'an that, that he received from, from God, um, brought a message that women um, are equal to men um, in their value. And not only that, that, uh, that in fact how you value a human being is not through their uh, um, brute strength, not through their uh, ability to um, dominate, but in fact their ability to submit themselves to God. So there's a whole different paradigm shift uh, of what makes a human being valuable. In pre Islamic Arabia, what made a human being valuable was to be a, uh, a dominant warrior, someone who, uh, who by whatever means necessary, um, subjected other people to his will. What the Qur'an says is that the person who is valuable in akramakum indallahi atqakum is the, the one who is most noble in the eyes of God is the one who has most awareness of God. That awareness is something that can be gained by either a man or a woman. That, um, that your gender has nothing to do with whether you have the ability um, to submit yourself to God. So there's a completely different um, assessment of the value of a human being uh, according to the Qur'an, uh, the Qur'anic paradigm. Could you provide examples of these women's responses, initial responses to Muhammad's message? Well, as is well known, the first person who responded to uh, the Prophet Muhammad's message was his wife Khadija. Khadija who was really in all ways a full partner to the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. She was uh, um, a mature woman who was uh, financially independent, who, was pro who had a, her professional career. And she and, and her husband really were in all ways full partners, raising their family, having their business. Um, she knew him, as, as a woman knows her husband, better than anyone. And when he received the call uh, by, by God um, to come and bring this message, she was the first to respond to him and supported him and believed in him. Um, but, you know, it didn't stop there. In fact, uh, women were among the early supporters of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, you had not only women like Khadija, who was a free woman of high status, but a woman like Sumeya, um, 
who was a slave woman, who was in a highly degraded position, and for whom this message of Islam was one of her dignity, um, even in a, if it appeared by, by all objective measures that she was the most degraded person in Meccan society. How were these women participating in the public realm of Mecca? Muslim women in Mecca um, uh, experienced um, hardship to the same degree that men did. Uh, we find that, for example, um, the first martyr in Islam was Sumaya, who was murdered in a brutal fashion uh, by her, by Abu Jahl, for being a Muslim. Um, because there was no recognition in Mecca, in the political order of Mecca, of individual human rights, it was possible for someone, a so-called free man, to kill a slave with impunity. Uh, among the other women were Khadija and the other women of um, uh, the Banu Hashim, the clan of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who uh, were boycotted by the rest of Quraysh for three years, who had to live on the outskirts of Mecca and were deprived of um, meaningful sustenance. In fact, we know that Khadija uh, died because she was weakened by the boycott. She and other women suffered along with the male uh, believers um, in that situation. Women also uh, were among the delegation that left Mecca at the command of the Prophet Muhammad to seek refuge with the, um, uh, the ruler of Abyssinia, a good Christian king who gave refuge and comfort to the Muslims who were persecuted in Mecca. Women were there with the men. So Muslim women were beside uh, the men at, in, at all stages um, in the Meccan period.